Ladies and gentlemen, I do agree that the American extreme right is in an immediate way dangerous, more dangerous than the extreme left, and that the American right is most especially dangerous, poses danger to the American elites. However, in an insidious way, the American left is not peaceful. There is danger. There is gradual, quiet, progressive, insidious danger. And we learn it from history. Okay? We learn it from history. Antifa, on a surface, seems good. They fight against fascists. However, let's look at the composition of Antifa. There are many different people, but main groups can be divided into communists, communists, socialists, and anarchists. Three groups. Three main groups. So let's see what happened during the, you know, Russian Revolution when the Bolshevik stage could attack. Initially, Bolsheviks mean communists. They were friends with uh, the anarchists and they were friends with uh, uh, and they were friends with the socialists. However, once the communists took over, they gave socialists pretty much a choice, either go to prison or join communist party. And they were fighting against the anarchists. Nestor Mak Makno, a russified Ukrainian peasant, the communists tried to assassinate him. They tried to kill him. He barely escaped. So, uh, you know, it's not nice. So if, let's assume for a second that Antifa takes over the United States. Same thing would happen here as it happened during the Bolshevik coup d'etat during the Russian Revolution. The communists would take over, they would uh, suppress the anarchists, they would give a choice to the socialists to join the communist party or be arrested, and that's pretty much would be the end of it. The United States would be a communist country, and we don't want a communist here. And you're gonna say, well, communist wasn't so bad. I beg to disagree. I did live in a communist country, and you could actually argue that the mildest form of communism existed in Poland. And still, in the mildest form of communism, things weren't good. The reason we ate well was because we were using black market. We were buying our food not just from the front of the store, but from the back of the store. And we had family living in a countryside. And fortunate for Poland and for us was that 70% of Polish farmland was in the private hands. And our cousins, my, 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 my uncles, they had two farms just outside of the city of Białystok. I'm a native of city of Białystok in Poland. And because they had two farms, we would help them with harvest and they would uh, give us some food. So, you know, we were fortunate that we ate well. You know, many people didn't eat that, that well like we did. Many people didn't have courage to, you know, uh, go against the communist law and buy food on a black market. Many people didn't have family who had farms in a countryside. Many people were much less fortunate. So I was doing well and I still didn't feel great. And I still, you know, love capitalist economy and I love free market. Why do I love free market? Why I love free market? Because, you know, anything that succeeded is based on the free market. North Korea keeps on failing and failing when it comes to economy because they don't have free market. Look what did the Chinese do, the red Chinese, by 1970s, 80s. They realized that communist economy can never work. It's impossible. So what did they do? They kept the communist party as the leader of the China, but they introduced capitalist economy, but they introduced this in a very sneaky way. What they did, 
they uh, you know put at the major and medium sized corporations the heads of those corporations are the kids and the grandkids of the communist leaders so right now China is a communist oligarchy it's not really communism it's a communist oligarchy country you know which is powered by free market but the free market is controlled by friends and a family of the communist party members that's how it works but it only the reason China works is the free market same thing with Sweden the so-called socialist country okay if not for the free market the socialism in Sweden wouldn't be possible let's be honest another thing because there is uh, unlikely but still a chance of the Russian invasion the Swedish do protect their borders really well and believe me if you told the Swedes that thousands of people a day could illegally cross their border they would tell you that it's impossible that they would never allow for it to happen and they would simply make certain it doesn't happen you have, have fallen on your head too hard something wrong with you Swedes would never allow it coming back to the communist thing it didn't happen just once it happened twice when the you know when the communists did go after others so for example my mother's uncle was in a Polish Socialist Party and a Polish Socialist Party and the Socialist Party of Great Britain were the only two socialist parties in Europe that weren't puppets of Joseph Stalin nevertheless you know communists decided that after World War II communists take over and uh, they decided to give him a break and they gave him a choice either go to prison or become a member of the communist party he refused to become a member of the communist party and guess what happens he was sent home two weeks later with broken ribs that's pretty much what happened so that's pretty much happens time after time after time and he himself and his party were not useful idiots however whenever the socialists and the anarchists work together with the communists communists do not view them as brothers and sisters as friends as comrades they view them as useful idiots because Lenin said that whoever is not with us is against us so that gave the mandate to the communists you know to oppress them suppress them prosecute them persecute them lie about them smear them you know do whatever to them even kill them you know imprison them because whoever is not with us is against us one thing here one very important thing let's first of all I'm gonna be the first here I'm gonna be the first here to establish the correct definition of progressive revolution so there were two progressive revolutions maybe three you know if you count China but let's first of all go after two progressive revolutions on a earth that were major revolutions or maybe more if you count Cuba and other places okay but for sure that there were two progressive revolutions by my definition of progressive revolution the French Revolution and the Bolshevik coup d'etat during Russian Revolution so what happens what do they do how does it work it works in a very simple way you exterminate one in nine people about 11 percent of the population you just exterminate them and when people look at how many people Stalin killed they forget the millions that Lenin killed so uh, what do you do you exterminate one in nine people and a majority of those people are people who would support the old system so there's no way to come back to the old system no matter how hard you try and I tried this in France after the extermination that happens during Russia that during the French Revolution what happens they try to go back to monarchy and they can't it's failing because they're simply the parts of the society that would successfully support it physically for the major part cease to exist so that's how it works so there is a danger in Antifa of course Antifa can lead to communist United States because if Antifa wins believe me it's not gonna be the anarchists 
It's not gonna be the socialists. It's gonna be straight up communists who are gonna run the show in the United States as the single party state, as a totalitarian state. There is no other way around it. And you know, uh, you know, it's uh, there is nothing, nothing better yet, yet invented than the capitalist free market. Nothing as of yet has worked in modern societies. It simply hasn't. Okay. Okay. Please, please write down. You know, if you know any other system than a capitalist system that works in modern society, please. And you know, take care of yourselves. And I'm not conservative. I own you myself a cons conservative. Believe me. You know, I view myself as in a sane way in progressive. Okay. But you know, I'm definitely not gonna be an useful idiot to communists. That's not gonna happen. And you know, take care of yourself and have a great day.